One of the F-35 Lightning II's most impressive and controversial components is the $400,000 helmet produced by a joint venture between Rockwell Columns and Elbit Systems of America. If you're looking for a helmet for the advanced F-35 Lightning II then get ready to put down enough money to buy a Ferrari sports car, undergo a two-day fitting process, keep your hair generally in the same shape, avoid putting on weight, and check in three times a year to make sure it still fits perfectly. Plagued by issues and criticism throughout its development, the Gen 3 Helmet Mounted Display System HMDS, is finally in use and the companies behind it say pilots are effusive about its performance. Rockwell is even looking at ways to leverage the base technology for other uses outside the F-35 or the military altogether, according to business development manager Joel Ray. The price tag is high, but Helmet doesn't really do the HMDS justice. The system consists of a number of components, such as a virtual HUD, beyond just the helmet, to help save weight by replacing analogous systems on other jets. It also provides some unique and groundbreaking functionality. Rockwell Collins fellow and mastermind behind the HMDS Bob Foot said it is the first aircraft primary flight display that is worn by the pilot. Each carbon fiber helmet is 3D milled to custom fit each pilot. Fit data is stored, so replacements can be crafted to order. The custom fit ensures that alignment of the pilot's eyes and helmet displays is precise, which allows pilots greater ability to see the display during high-G maneuvers," Foot said. That alignment is particularly important in the F-35 because so much crucial data is provided to the pilot on the helmet's display. Not least of which is the technology that lets pilots see through the plane, in the words of Elbit America Senior Director of Communications Rod Gibbons. The helmet uses a tracker to tell where the pilot is looking at any given time, then, working with the distributed aperture system, DAWS, S360 degree real-time video, augments the vision in both eyes, as opposed to just one, thanks to pilot feedback, with additional information, even if the pilot isn't looking out the cockpit's windshield. Using the same tracker, pilots can essentially aim their weapons just by looking at the target. A built-in, visor-projected night vision system without the need for separate goggles and continuous iteration and stripping out weight, combined with the balance provided by custom fitting, means the helmet is light and balanced enough to help combat fatigue, which is important for long cockpit sessions that will involve high-G flying. At least, that seems to be the process described in a new Air Force press release detailing just how much work it takes to keep one part of the $78 million F-35 fighter ready to fly. The F-35 helmet is a technological marvel. It can display night vision, thermal imagery and video from below the jet, letting pilots effectively see through the airframe and track targets without having to look back and forth from their cockpit screens. The effect is such that, instead of having one screen in front of you showing icons and symbols marking compass directions or targets, your entire view has those images overlaid onto the real world. Air Force F-35 pilot Major Justin Hassard Lee said in a May video, Obviously, we're using it in a different way, but the helmet allows us to synthesize large amounts of information. All that technology must be finely tuned to work properly, and that's where airmen like Bass and Artiga come in to make sure the helmets are perfectly fitted to the pilots wearing them. First, the pilots have their heads measured and scanned. In the Marine Corps, those scans are used to build a portable helmet liner that goes between the F-35B pilot's head and the hardshell helmet itself. This styrofoam cap fits into any size helmet, enabling a pilot to take the helmet liner from squadron to squadron for use throughout his or her career, a Marine Corps press release said. Once the scanning is complete, the helmet optics have to be perfectly aligned with the pilot's eyes. Technicians use a pupillometer, which measures the distance between the pilot's pupils within 2 mm of its center. Next, aircrew flight equipment technicians fit the pilots with oxygen masks and identify any leaks around the mask that could prevent proper oxygen flow. The next part is to ensure there is a proper distance between the mask and the visor, Artiga said. We have to make sure, when the pilot moves or talks, the mask doesn't hit the visor. If it's too close, it will bend the visor and distort the display image. That's not the end of it though. After the initial fit, the helmet is inspected every 105 days and has a 120-day fit check to make sure it's still snug. Custom-fitted helmets are not new to military aviators. An Air Force F-15E pilot told the war zone last year that each helmet is custom-fitted to the pilot and you are pretty much tied to that helmet throughout your career. 
F-15E pilots also have to be fitted for joint helmet-mounted queuing systems, which help pilots lock onto a target with their eyes, according to a 2010 press release. But the F-35 takes that technology all the way up to 11. The sci-fi capabilities of the F-35 helmet and the importance of nailing the display setup was in full view in 2017, when helmet footage showed a near-disastrous F-35B landing aboard the USS America. The near crash was caused by a display malfunction which also made refueling with a KC-135 aerial refueling tanker a struggle. The helmet footage helped analyze what went wrong, and, inadvertently, it also showed how cool it is to look through an F-35 helmet. Hopefully the near crash will make it safer for pilots to operate the fighter in the future.